the ever reliable L bracket. It's always something nice to have and you often don't really have to take it out from your camera. It's always great for when you're shooting, especially when you have to shoot vertical, but it's not perfect. Especially since flip out screens have been very popular nowadays, there are limitations to L brackets and that is why many brands have been developing different ways to make it more convenient. So in this video, let's geek out a bit on L brackets and the many approaches to perfecting them. So this is my camera and this is my tripod and obviously it's straightforward how you would mount the camera on the tripod because when you get the tripod you always have this base plate right here. Now things ultimately started getting complicated when we started wanting to shoot vertical. May this be for portraits or landscapes or products or even vertical videos. Of course ultimately it wouldn't be complicated if you're comfortable with shooting it just like this with the ball head turned to the side. Needless to say, some photographers are not comfortable with having their cameras just like this because the weight is towards the side and there's just that feeling of imbalance in the setup. At the same time, if you, for example, are shooting panoramas, you're gonna get extreme distortion if you are just turning it this way. So because of that, for over a decade or so, there's been one tool that's popular with photographers, especially those who shoot a lot of vertical layouts, and that is the L bracket. Obviously, we have one part connected to the base of the camera and you can also use that bottom part to be able to mount the camera onto the tripod. However, there is this other side that will allow you to mount it vertically so that you don't have to tilt your ball head. Or, of course, it also applies for any other tripod head. Most L brackets have an Arca Swiss mount which is great for compatibility and basically having it sort of universal for many tripod heads. Now there are L brackets that are kind of universal and would fit most cameras and there are also L brackets that are somehow tailored for the specific camera that you're using. This for example is an L bracket made specifically for the Sony a7R5, the a7R4, the a7S3, and the a7 IV. It's tailored to fit so that you don't really have to remove and disassemble the L bracket whenever you're not using the camera and you can just always keep it there. Now over a decade ago when we were all using DSL cameras and flip screens weren't popular yet, then any L bracket was just perfectly fine for your camera. You wouldn't have any challenges. However, in recent years, there was a problem that began to arise because of the flip screen. And that simply was the fact that the L bracket would get in the way with the motion of the flip screen. As you can see here, I cannot turn the screen towards the other side simply because the L bracket is right here. Now for this one, they did leave a gap so that you can have it there. And ultimately, there is that possibility of the L bracket hitting the screen and possibly breaking it. At the same time, the fact that the L bracket is on this side, it does kind of cause an obstruction between the ports and the doors that allow you to insert whatever accessory that you might have to use with your camera. So it does need an extra step wherein you have to use the tool connected to the L bracket and extend it like that. And yes, it does solve the problem, but it is still an extra step in terms of accessing the ports. Ultimately, what everyone wanted was just an easier way to be able to access the ports when you need it and to just simply make the workflow or setting up much easier and more convenient. Now, a couple of months ago, the brand SmallRig actually came up with a pretty smart solution to that which is this. As you can see, this is the bottom part and you don't have the L, but actually there is a button right here that you press to be able to unlock and the L part, I don't know what to properly call that, but the L part or the L side is something that you can unfold and assemble like that. Now it also mounts the same way as how the old L bracket design does and it also comes with this tool that is magnetically connected to the bottom part so that you won't ever lose it. So if you're shooting horizontally, you can just have it folded and mount it as is. 
and whenever you're going to shoot vertically you can just press the button have the L bracket part and mount it like that it's actually a really good solution because when you're shooting horizontally then you have full access to all the angles of the flip screen and you have full access to the ports as well. If you're shooting vertically and you also need access to the ports, you can just slide over the base part so you make a bit of space right here, then lock the bracket again. So you just have enough room to access all the doors of the ports and if the cables are L-type, there is also just a bit more space for that so you can access it as well. And if you're shooting vertically, even with all those accessories mounted, I think you have just enough room to be able to have them there without really getting it in the way of mounting your camera. But here's a twist. About a month ago, Small Rig started the pre-order on a different solution to the same problem that actually might even work better. They were nice enough to send it over along with the folding L bracket for us to review and also for us to basically explore these options before we purchase whatever solution or tool we would choose for our own workflow. And of course, I'm talking about this. It's not an L bracket. It is a base plate, but it is connected to something different. So this is actually a fitted base plate for the Sony A7R5, R4, S3, and the A7 IV, but the front part connects to this lens collar. And this is similar to those things that you would see on heavier telephoto lenses. And you know what? It actually just makes sense. For one, I always thought that it's always better if you have the center of gravity of the camera a bit more forward, which means that mounting your camera would be not on the part of the camera, but a bit on the part of the base of the lens. And this is especially true for setups with heavier lenses but do not have colors such as telephoto lenses. So if you're shooting with big primes or maybe even a heavier 24 to 70 millimeter or even the lighter 24 to 70 millimeter, I do think that it feels comfortable when the tripod mount is actually a bit more on the distal part. Now in terms of mounting and setting it up, it's the same but also different. It's the same because it basically mounts the same way as any of the other L bracket variants, but also it's different because you would have to remove the lens whenever you are mounting this particular tool. And that's because you would have to have this part empty because the collar wouldn't fit entirely onto the front part of the lens and of course it would not fit from the back. So you would have to take out the lens to be able to mount the tool and then that's when you put the lens back on. It is an extra step, but then again, with how effective this tool is, then you might not even want to ever take it out from your camera anyway. In terms of weight, it's only about 10 grams heavier than the standard L bracket, so you don't really have to think about it. Now, of course, the bottom of the collar is already Arca Swiss mount, so all you have to do is place it on the tripod and you're ready. And now it actually feels like you're using one of those bulkier lenses simply because you have the collar and the foot right here. Now the collar does not really open. It's not like the old collars that we used to see on the older DSLR lenses. Instead, it's just wide enough to take in all the lenses. But again, you have to take out the lens to be able to mount it onto the camera. At the bottom of the plate, of course, there is also that magnetically stored key and right here is where you can see the knob for locking and unlocking the color rotation and on this part they did make kind of an extended button so that you can still access the unlock button for the lens so basically if you're shooting horizontally then there's no problem because all your ports are accessible and you don't have anything in the way now, if you want to shoot vertical, all you have to do is unlock the knob and basically you have it right there. It doesn't go all the way 360 degrees and actually turns all the way up to 90 degrees. So it only goes horizontal and vertical. You can't have it upside down or turned the other way. Now, one concern I immediately had was 
wouldn't the color damage the lenses? But if you look closely, this is the Sony 50mm f1.4 G Master. It's a small lens for what it is, but it's also not as small as perhaps the kit lenses. But if you look closely, you can actually see that there is still a bit of space between the color and the surface of the lens. So you wouldn't really have to worry about your lens getting scratched. This worry stems from the old experience of older photographers with the old type of lens colors from, I would say, I have the, that experience from the old Canon 70 to 200 millimeter telephoto lenses. And if you have a lens color on that, ultimately after a few years, you would see that the paint on the lens would be scratched because of the rotation of the color. But actually, this one does not even rotate around the lens because again, it's not in contact with the lens. But instead, it has two layers that rotate on themselves. So you don't really have to worry about the color damaging the surface of your lens, especially if you did spend quite a bit on the lens. Now, of course, another hesitation would be, would it fit all your lenses? And I don't have a way of having an absolute answer for this because I don't have all the biggest Sony lenses, but I did get a hold of the biggest lens that I can and basically let's see if it will mount. This is the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter and this is again basically the biggest lens I can get my hands on. Now of course you shouldn't ever mount this setup on a tripod with the tripod connected to the camera body. Instead of course you should be using the foot on the lens color of the bigger lens. However it does make sense if you just want to keep the bracket on the body for when you switch lenses. And that's precisely how it works. Again, it fits the 200 to 600 millimeter very comfortably. There is still a bit of space, so I don't think there will be any scratches to worry about. So the primary question if it fits is right there. It's not gonna scratch, and you can just keep it even if you are mounting the tripod on this part instead. Now this particular bracket was again made for the Sony A7R5, the A7R4, the A7 IV, the A7S3, and even the A1. And I did ask Small Rig if there will be other variants for other camera body types and also other brands. And they said that yes, of course, there will be compatibility with other cameras and other camera brands. And I also do hope that they make one that's universal so that even the SLR camera users, wherein I don't think the brand would still make dedicated versions of these for older cameras. So at the very least, I wish that they would make universal ones that the SLR users or even those who use rare cameras could use for such a purpose. And there we go. If you are someone like me who likes to shoot vertical and don't want to tilt your ball head and you basically want to have the best ergonomics in terms of your camera setup, then this is your option, the foldable L bracket. And this is also your option, the rotating bracket with the lens collar. And I guess that's how you graduate from the standard L bracket. Now, to be honest, I'm still torn whether I'm going to use this primarily or the foldable L bracket. I'm pretty sure that for my A7 IV, which I mostly use for video and rarely ever for photos, I would use the foldable L bracket. But I think for the A7R5 that I use for landscape photography, I am going to keep this rotating bracket color thing from small rig. Now, if you have any questions, do leave them down below in the comment section, and I will put the links to all these products down below, even if I don't have any affiliate account. I should work on that. But yeah, the links will be down below if you want to check them out. And if you do have suggestions to Small Rig, one thing I really like about this brand is they listen to suggestions and they answer the questions. So I might be able to help you get your questions and your requests to them. In any case, again, this is the L bracket, this is the folding L bracket, and this is the rotating bracket with the lens collar. And those are your options. And of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I'm a landscape and architectural photographer, and this channel talks about landscape and architectural photography and all the gear and the tech that I use 
whenever I'm shooting or editing. And if you're into that, then please do click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. But in any case, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.